Okay, to be honest, high order derivatives are not that groundbreaking, okay? Literally all it means is you're going to take the derivative of this function twice. You're going to take it once using your regular old derivative rules, and then whatever result you get, you're going to take the derivative of that. That's literally all there is to it, okay? So if this is our function, negative 5x to the 3 halves minus 4x square root of x plus 9, and we want to find the second derivative, then we start with the first derivative. f prime of x is negative 5 times 3 over 2x to the 1 half minus 4 times 1 half x to the negative 1 half. Derivative of 9, it's a constant, so it's 0. I'll put it on there just because I have to simplify the other stuff anyways. Now, I would go ahead and simplify these coefficients before I continue on to take the derivative again. So that gives us negative 15 over 2x to the 1 half minus 2x to the negative 1 half. So that's a simplified version of the first derivative. So then in the second derivative, we're just going to apply our exact same derivative rules. We're just going to them again. So negative 15 over 2 times 1 half x to the negative 1 half minus 2 times negative 1 half x to the negative 3 halves. So final answer, f double prime of x is equal to negative 15 fourths x to the negative 1 half. I'm going to leave it like that because it started in rational exponent form, so I'm just going to leave it that way. Uh, negative 2 times negative 1 half is positive 1, so that's plus x to the negative 3 halves. That one did start as a square root, but... I would just look at my answer choices and see whether they're in exponent form or radical form. Okay, let's look at a rational example. Okay, y is equal to 7 over x. y is equal to 7 over x, and we want to find y triple prime, so the third derivative. So y prime is equal to, and I'm going to do myself a favor, I'm just going to go up here and I'm going to rewrite 7 over x as 7x to the negative 1. Alright, so y prime is 7 times negative 1 x to the negative 2, which is negative 7x to the negative 2. y double prime, negative 7 times negative 2x to the negative third which is 14x to the negative third. Y triple prime, the third derivative, is 14 times negative 3x to the negative 4, which simplifies to negative 42x to the negative fourth, or if you want to fix that negative exponent since it started as a rational function, move the x to the negative fourth to the denominator to make it positive four. That's the third derivative. Notice how the degree changes, okay? Uh, for the rational function, we started with x to the first in the denominator. The third derivative ends up with x to the fourth, so it's counting up one every time. That's because it's uh, in the denominator. Let's look at a polynomial example here. Okay, the original function is 2x to the 4th plus 8x cubed minus 10x squared plus 3x minus 11. And we want to find um, the fifth derivative. The fifth derivative of y with respect to x is technically how you read that notation. The fifth derivative of y with respect to x. Okay. 
Does anybody have a conjecture about what's going to happen before we do it? What happens when we take the derivative of a polynomial? Every time the degree drops. So if we take this derivative five times, and we started with the fifth degree, or fourth degree, excuse me. Negative. Maybe not negative. It's going to be zero. Okay, so let, let's observe that that happens, but that's that's a little nugget you should tuck away there. Um, so dy over dx, and I'm going to kind of do multiple steps in one. I think we can handle that with polynomials. Uh, the derivative would be 8x cubed plus 24x squared minus 20x plus 3. I just didn't show all the intermediate steps there. So d squared y over dx squared, the second derivative of y with respect to x is 24x squared plus 48x minus 20. The third derivative of y with respect to x is 48x plus 48. The fourth derivative of y with respect to x is equal to 48. So finally, the fifth derivative of y with respect to x is 0. Now, that works with polynomials because every time a polynomial reduces in degree, every time you take a derivative, it reduces in degree. Um, so if you're asking to take a derivative that's one degree higher than the polynomial, then your answer is going to be 0. Um, so you kind of took that one away for future knowledge. <clears throat>